Welcome to the Dr. Renee Sunday Show, where it's not too late to shine. We bring you transformative information for small business owners, entrepreneurial insight, wisdom, and secrets to aid you to be seen, be heard, and get paid, to catapult your life to more impact, success, and freedom. Now, please welcome your host, the platform builder herself, Dr. Renee Sunday. Welcome, 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 welcome to the Dr. Renee Sunday Show. I am Dr. Renee Sunday, and I am the platform builder. So you know what we do here. We want to bring you valuable information that we can bring awareness, education, but also we want all of us, including myself, to make wise decisions. So what we do here at the Dr. Renee Sunday Show, we bring you people that sort of make you say, "Uh uh-huh, right? But we actually want you to obtain your goals, your dreams, your purpose, just the reason you were created. And we want to stop for a minute and just say thank you. Thank you for downloading us on iTunes. Thank you for checking us out on uh, just everywhere, iTunes, our website, and social media. You know, we see the analytics, so we just thank you for believing in us. But I want you to know that we believe in you as well. And I just love it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and you know, first of what I do is I help people obtain their dreams in life. Uh, with the platform builder, we, we build platforms. So you got to have that solid foundation in order for you to actually get that visibility in your brand. You know, my main things that I love to do is podcasting, publishing. But you got to have that media exposure. You have to have people that have the eyeballs on you. And you want that to be a good you know, good stuff, right? <laughs> Not nothing bad that we got to talk about and we got to clean up later, right? But anyway, here, we just love you here. But we're going to get started. We have a powerhouse with us. And, you know, I just love talking to to energetic people I, that's in their passion because I can't be in my passion and my purpose. I can't be there unless you are as well. So that's why we like people to come and chat with us so we can actually better ourselves, right? You know, the, uh, the slave, what's that slogan that everyone says, uh, the best version of me or the better version. So we actually have to get information that we can actually have that awareness and then we can go to that the stages of change. Yes, the stages of that, right? Okay. But we want to also get our guest on. We have Mr. Johnny Gators. He's going to tell me if I mispronounced his name. I think I did just now. And he know my heart, daddy. He's going to give me straight. But you know here, uh, when we do stuff, you know, do it in the spirit of excellence. But then also, it's okay to be corrected as well. That's life, right? But this young man, uh, I just love his spirit. Uh, he's in the social work and mental health field. For years, can I say that? For years. Yes. He actually currently uh, is a mental health therapist for Family Links. Now, y'all check them out. And what I really like, the model that he's doing is therapeutic classroom, and he works with, you know, the kids, children, our babies, right, first through the third grade. And I was thinking back. You know, the first through the third grade, that was, even in my life, I'm like, yes, I had to have those foundations together. Wow, because it, it, it plummeted my life. It, it could be, it can, it can actually, you can, I can think back, and I ain't going to say, y'all know how old I am, but, <laughs> but um, I can remember back the first grade and the third grade. But he actually worked with our babies. You know, he does individual and group therapy for the students. And he, he guides them. You know, if you feel like someone really cares about you, you can actually, what, listen to what they have to say because they generally want you to do better. And this is what this young man does. He also is very active in the community. And what we really love that he actually, uh, he, he's a writer. He's a writer. See, he actually uh, monthly writes for the mental health memoirs for his own church. Uh, it's in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And he's a supporter of mental health. Health. You hear me? It's health. And especially in the African American uh, community, we really uh, celebrate him because he's in the field of social work and mental health. But he really want to help people because if we have our mind together, right, we actually can do the things that we're 
been, you know, called to do, that we were created to do. But we want to welcome, welcome, welcome none other than Johnny. Are you there? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Wow. Well, let's tell us a little bit more about yourself and the, uh, the amazing things that's going on in your life. Okay. So right now um, I am a mental health therapist with Family Links Incorporated. With my position, my position is under the therapeutic classroom model, which is with myself and five other therapists where we are at a specific school within the Pittsburgh Public School District. And in that specific school within the Pittsburgh Public School District, we have a therapeutic classroom. And the therapeutic classroom ranges depends on what kind of grade, depending on the grades that the students are in. So within my particular school that I'm in, which is Pittsburgh Carmel, the kids I work with is in grades first through third grade. In the classroom setting, I do individual and group therapy with the students, along with helping out the teachers and helping out with the school as well, just making sure that the kids get what they need as well. And with the kids being in the therapy the classroom, that doesn't mean they're going to be in there forever and things of that nature. That's basically, The therapy classroom is just a way for them to just give them guidance and give them the skills and the tools that they need so they could go back into the mainstream classroom setting. Mm, I love that. Well, well, Johnny, let's step back a little bit if it's okay, because um, mm-hmm. people on media, social media, you know, television, radio, we hear the word a lot about mental health. Kind of give us a working definition of, because some people think that it's not involving them, they think that the, uh, if they don't want to get out of bed, it's, it's, you know, it's okay. Kind of give us a working definition so we can see, you know, so we can actually, to be honest, let's look at the man in the mirror, like Michael Jackson, you know, told us, mm-hmm. to see what we need to do in our own life or someone that's actually, you know, close to us. So let us know, what, do you, what is the term mental health? What does it encompass? So in my own understanding, when it comes to mental health, when I look at things, everything runs as a system. So in our community, within the African-American community, as soon as somebody hears mental health, they automatically think people are crazy. But that's not really the case. Mental health is just making sure that your mind, your body, and your spirit is in, you know, a good functioning, in a good function, and in a good space. So if your mental health, is not at ease or not at the place where it's supposed to be, it's going to affect you all around. So say, for example, if I am down and out and just miserable and worried, you know, just miserable and worried, and that carries out for a long period of time, that's going to mess up my physical side. That's just going to make me say, nope, I don't want to cut my hair. No, I don't want to take a shower, things of that nature. And when you do, when you do those things, that affects your system. Your whole body crashes. So mental health encompasses everything within your health and everything within your well-being, your internal and your external. And with your mental health within itself, if your mental health is not intact, it does affect the people that's, you know, surrounding you, like your family, your coworkers, your friends, and people out, you know, outside in, in the public that you normally network with. So that's why it's important to, fo- you know, focus on your mental health. And I will give you – I'll give you a, um, a – a personal story within myself. Even though I've been in the field for almost seven years now, um, recently myself, I had to deal with, um, I had a crash and burn experience at the end of 2018 going into 2019 where I had to go back home to Philadelphia for, it was like Thanksgiving holiday, and out of nowhere, I ended up having three seizures. Um I had, after having those three seizures and learning that I had to, you know, stay home with my family and stuff, that kind of led me to worrying, kind of led me to be ang- angry, upset, and it led me to a point that I just had, like, a big release of emotions. Because sometimes when it comes to certain things within myself with emotions, I kind of, like, hold it in here and there. And it's like, it was a moment where I had to just let things out because it was, like, eating me up. And once I had let those emotions out and kind of just focused on me, and I'll thank my mom and my sister for this because they said it. They told me this, too, when I had that breakdown moment that, okay, if you're a therapist and you like to help people, you should be able to, you know, 
kind of practice what you preach and, you know, take care of yourself because yourself is important because if you don't take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of other people? So once they told me that, it kind of hit home to me, and that's when I started, you know, focusing on myself, releasing my emotions, making sure myself is well and stable so I could be able to continue to do what I love because I love helping people. I've been having that love for helping people since I was 15 years old. Growing up in Philadelphia, I was volunteering at hospitals. I was doing summer camp programs, doing things with the Ron McDonald House, and still to this day at the age of 30, even at the age of 30, I still help out and volunteer and do a lot of community activities and stuff within myself personally and also within my fraternity that I'm a part of. And with me doing a lot of things in the field and within the fraternity side in my personal life, I had to learn that when my body says it's time to rest, I have to listen to my body. And that's why it's important for us as individuals that we have to listen to our bodies. We have to listen to what our bodies are telling us. If our bodies say that, okay, you need to get some rest, you have to rest. If our bodies saying that our minds are not where it's supposed to be, it's okay to get it checked out. If your emotions are not intact, it's important to share what you're feeling, especially with us black men. Black men, they are black men already, and which I kind of gave a speech about this a couple of weeks ago at an event that we had black men has a stigma that we always had to be strong and hard and stuff. And I had to let that out and say that, no, it's okay for us black men to cry. It's okay for us to share our feelings and stuff because it could eat us up. Mm. That that is so powerful, and, and you you know you really tapped on something that really, and, and I'm gonna just say a big umbrella of healthcare professionals. Uh, we always and caregivers, et cetera, et cetera. We always helping other people, but sometimes we don't even know what you just said that the, the self care, what that really means. And I, I have a story with that as well. I mean, <laughs> to the point that. Uh, you know, I, I ended up having a car accident, and then it was a, a life. It was a life changing experience, really, because the accident happened like two inches from the gas tank. So my whole life could have been, you know, gone. I, you know, and and, mm-hmm. it, and I had to not work for a period of time, and and, and it really gave me an opportunity because uh, uh, my blood pressure. That's what it was. My blood pressure was high since the accident, and and the doctor thought. Asked me, well, what have you done? I said, well, the last time I took my blood pressure, you know, it was in that magic number. People say that, 120 over 60. And Mm -hmm. so I had to really evaluate my stuff, Johnny, and say, okay, what am I really doing? So I also had to do that, and I love to be a voice like yourself and many others in the health field, that in order for us to be able to help, you know, the many people that come in our path, that we actually have to make sure we have self care and, and and you know and not what I love to, that you said is we need to stop saying it's not happening. We need to go on and say okay if we are having stress, we are having concerns with our mind that we actually gonna say okay, but then we're gonna move forward and actually get some help with that. Talk about that because. And, and you say this so wonderfully, and I think I helped a little bit with that, because a lot of people think that our mind, being the mental health, if you will, doesn't connect with our physical body. It doesn't affect our family. Uh, but you said that so wonderfully. But can you say a little bit more about that? Because I think people think that they're isolated. That's the word that I'm trying to gather. Because we are not isolated. It can affect the whole household, the whole community, Mm -hmm. and even your whole state, depending on what decisions you make. Yes, yes. And and this kind of ties into my experience, what I had recently as well, because when I had, when I had got sick and when the seizures had started kicking in, my mind was at a, like, my mind was at a worry state because I was worried about, oh, I have a job in Pittsburgh. Oh, I'm gone for like three months. I don't know what's next. And then my mind was at a big shock when I was deciding on if I was either going to get well to say, okay, I could come back to Pittsburgh, come back to work and stuff like that. Everything was on the line. And when your mind starts racing and having different thoughts and things like that, it will affect 
not just you, but it will affect other people. So, like, when my mom was at ease and was worrying and stuff like that, the, my emotions start to trigger. And when my emotions started to trigger, it kind of went on to my family members. Like, my mom started to get angry. My sisters and my sisters and my brothers started to get, you know, emotional and angry and kind of, like, fed up with me and stuff like that. And that's why it's important that we have to check ourselves because if we do whatever we do, it does affect others. And a, a good thing about it, too, with me working in this uh, in this field, especially working with kids, kids can read, like, kids can know what you're feeling and what you're going through as soon as you walk in the door. So, like, for example, if one day if I was to walk, walk in the classroom and I come in with a different vibe, the kids will automatically would say, well, Mr. Johnny, what's wrong with you? Is something all right? Because kids could already understand, even though – with kids and their mind, kids and their uh, development, they sometimes they, they develop their brain development is still growing and mat- uh, maturing. They still could understand read and read emotions better than us adults. So that's why, and I know we all hear this saying that sometimes we gotta check our attitudes at the door before we come into a different setting. That's and that is that is definitely important to do because if we don't check our attitude, if we don't check our physical, you know, appearance and our inner, you know, our inner space, that can carry out to others. And even though we don't share it, people can still see it because body language is everything. People can read body language. And like when my fam- and then with my family, and then with my family, when I had that moment when I was, you know, sick and everything, even though I wasn't saying nothing, they was already reading it because of how I was showing it. And once mm. I had that release of emotion, like once I had that time, I was like, all right, it's time to just let everything out. And once I had let everything out and I just started, once I had let everything out in terms of like my emotions and how I was feeling about me not, you know, being sick and why this happening, why me, why me, why me, why me, and then bringing up stuff from like past experiences and things like that. Once I had that, like that full release, it was like a cleanse. And with mm. that cleanse, it it, with that cleanse, it kind of made me feel much better. And I thank God for this because even when I had that release of emotions, it kind of made me reconnect with God in, its, in itself. And once I had that release and reconnected with God, things just started smooth sailing. And currently, and I can say currently right now, too, I'm still on a high because after that release and returning back to Pittsburgh in last year, things just started the door's just been opening. I've been blossoming in my career, blossoming in my fraternity, and then just blossoming personally because I'm now, to, you know, now I can say that even though every day is a different day, each day I'm growing, and I'm here on this, and I can say that I'm here on this earth for a reason, and I'm here on this earth for a purpose. <laughs> I love it, Donna. You got, you got me all teared up, but I love it because, we 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 have to go through a trans transition. Oh, transformation! That yeah, mm-hmm. I, I just love that because sometimes we keep that in, and that's making us sicker. You know, uh, yes. uh, research out there has said that uh, stress and worry increase risk of cancer, stroke, and diabetes, and all that mm-hmm. stuff. So we actually need to 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 be on top of that. I want to talk about this a little bit, Johnny, uh, because. The amazing thing is, like you and myself and so many other people have uh, support groups that actually uh, have helped them through the process. But what are your suggestions? Because a lot of people feel like, you know, again, that they're all alone and, and they that stigma, unfortunate, of going to get help, going to a, a to a, you know, to a, uh, you know, just support, I'm going to just say support, you know, that may be, you know, to get therapy, that may be, you know, that may even be medications, but a support system that actually can help them go throughout this journey. Talk to us about that, and, and I know everybody has, you know, it can be individual or group, and everybody needs maybe a different tailor of that, but speak on that, because I think people need to know it's okay to get therapy, it's okay to reach out to our mental health professionals. Mhm. And with support groups, 
I know there's sometimes people do get, you know, nervous or upset. I mean, get nervous about even going to therapy, but there are support groups that's outside of, you know, getting therapy. Like, for example, uh, with me living in Pittsburgh, I have a good, you know, collection of colleagues that I kind of interact with and work with, and they host different events within the city that is more open for people to just come and, you know, share their experiences and share their emotions outside of going to outside of going to you know the particular therapy route or the particular group therapy setting so it's out like there's things that's out there that people could actually go to so say for example if i have someone that is that's dealing with alcoholism and they don't want to go to alcoholics and you know not alcoholic and not alcohol you know aa alcoholic anonymous if they don't want to go to that particular program, there's they could be there's other programs that they could go to outside of that if they don't want to see themselves as that label. Say so say for example, anything anything so anything that relates to like mental health or anything that relates to a particular like diagnosis or something, it always relates to something. It always is coincides with something else. So say for example, that person that's dealing with alcoholism, they're probably dealing with grief and loss because they probably lost a loved one. There are per, there is a there are support groups in in different areas where you can go to and you know share your story about grief and you know share about your grief and loss and things of that nature. And that's another thing with mental health in itself because when people go through certain emotions and go through certain issues with mental health and get diagnosed with certain things, there's always an underlying thing. So, I mean, an underlying thing that leads to what causes a particular, you know, mental health state to happen. So for that person that's dealing with alcoholism, if their underlying feeling is that they're still upset that they lost their grandmother or a fan or a law or or a loved one, they could go to a group, they could go to a support group or interact with people that they know that lost a particular one, loved one and see how they kind of, and see how, what they did to cope with it or how they handle it instead of going to alcohol. Mm, yeah. So there's different. Yeah, so that. there's different. So there's different. Like so there's different groups and there's and this is why social media. Even though some people downplay social media when it comes to like people putting up negativity and stuff like that, but there's different. Social media has a lot of resources where you can know about different events in your city, and you can easily research it. If you say, like, for example, if I'm looking for a support group that is dealing with grief and loss, you could type that up, type your city up, and there are probably a lot of different events that's happening. And if it tailors to you, you can easily go to those events and be able to listen out. And if you feel comfortable to share your story, then you can share your story. And with you sharing your story, that could lead to you have a build a network with other people that shares the same story as you. And this is why I kind of, I'm thankful for, uh, thankful for me going through the experience of me getting sick and everything. Cause after all, even though I'm in this, you know, in this field and in this profession, I could easily explain it to my the kids I work with. I could easily explain it to people in the community that I speak with at different events that, yes, I had been through some, you know, everybody has been through mental health issues, including myself being a professional. I had been through a mental health, you know, you know, been through mental health experiences because of me being sick. It's normal. It's a normal thing. We all been through it, but it's important for us to just speak up, you know, speak up on it. And I consider myself to be a living testimony um, to that aspect because with me being in the field, already get, having experience in the field, but then also being an individual that actually experienced it too on both sides. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is powerful. <laughs> that that really that that really is powerful. I tell, and I, I I do that as well with my patients. They they say, "Well, Dr. Sutton, you haven't had an IV." I say, "Yes, I have." <laughs> mm-hmm. We so all have. We all have IVs. Yes. <laughs> oh Lord. God, Every, we all been. Time. We all been. We all been like. And I'll say this: We all. Everyone has been through something. It's just up to us to be able to be comfortable. And, and you know share you know share it out and and if people don't have the you know the confidence or anything they could have 
they could go to somebody, if it's a friend that they know that they can trust or if it's a family member that they know that they, they can trust, they could take it as a step-by-step basis. They could always start small. And once you take that step-by-step process and climb up the ladder, then that's letting you know that you are making progress of what you want to do or you are making progress of what you want to release and let go to move forward and within your life. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. Well, Johnny, please tell us any, you know, any other information that we need to know, and then please tell us also how we can contact you and support you on social media and, and continue to do the amazing things that you're doing in life. Okay, so I want to leave, want to give out two points. The first point is your self care is important. Self care is important because without self care, you won't be able to, you won't be able to push through in life. So if you feel like you're overwhelmed or if you feel like everything is doing too much, do something that you love in terms of self-care. For example, with me, if I'm, like, stressed or things like that, I like to go for a walk. If I'm stressed out, I like to go for a drive, just to drive and just enjoy scenery. So it's, it's important that you have self important to do self, have self-care for yourself. So with self-care, do something that you love that could take your mind off of things so you could be able to have your, your peaceful zen. Um, another thing is, Just being able to just accept who you are as an individual. Just accept yourself. Um, We already know that people, we get judged, but but people judge us on a daily basis, and we do get judged or we do look at other people and see that we don't fit that particular aspect of certain people. Just live, I'll say just live for you. We We all was put on this earth for a reason, and we all have a purpose. So it's up to you to live up to your purpose. And I want to say this, too, for black men. Black men, it's up to us to live up to our purpose. We have to be role models. We have to be leaders. We have to, you know, step out the box and push out the narrative that we all can do things, that we have the capability of doing things. Like with myself, when I was 15 years old, I always had that mindset that I always loved to help people. And with me being 30 now, and I'm still doing what I love, no one can take that away from me because I love what I do. And no one can take that, you know, take that, the joy that I have within myself because I work to have this joy. I work to have it. And God gave me the joy to be able to do the things that I love to do. And he gave me that gift. So I appreciate the gift of helping people. Sometimes, yeah, it does get stressful. Sometimes it gets draining. But I wake up every day appreciating what I love to do. And I want everyone to be able to appreciate and love what you do and love being on this earth, on a, being able to be on this earth on a daily basis because life is short. And you have to be able to share your gift before that time, you know, before that time comes. Uh, within my social media handles, I am on Facebook. People can contact me on Facebook, which is Johnny, J-O-H-N-I-E, um, capital R, capital M, Gathers, G-E-A-T-H-E-R-S. Um, on Instagram, my Instagram name is J-G, the mastermind. I love it. I love it. It's just so, Donna, you just a breath of fresh air. You are amazing. I, you really uplift and motivate people. And we really are. Well, first of all, let me say this. We want to thank you for being in your purpose, being who you are. And then, second of all, we want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be a guest here with us on the Dr. Renee Sunday Show. If you need us for anything, please, please don't hesitate to contact us. And I want to say one more thing. I want to shout out Sharice Nance. She um, is a powerhouse here in Pittsburgh. She um, was the one that referred me to you about doing this interview. And once I had got the information about it, I said, yeah, I'm going to go for it. 
and things like that. And Sharif, I applaud her because she's recognized that myself and 20 other social workers within um, the Pittsburgh area for her first annual um, SWAG Awards. And the SWAG Award, the SWAG Awards actually stands for Social Worker um, Social Worker Appreciation of Greatness. So myself and 20 other social workers within the city that does different things within the field is getting honored for going above and beyond our calling. And we're getting honored on March 29th at the uh, at the Hosanna House at 2 p.m. And if anybody wants to purchase tickets to see me and see other social workers in Pittsburgh get honored and network, interact, and have a great time, you can go on www.theswagawards.com. I love it. I love it. Yes, she's doing an amazing thing. Yes, she's doing an amazing job. But she sent me the information. I'm like, woo! This is amazing yes, because it is. I, even in my medical field side and even personally, I've had to interact with social workers, and they really, they they really go to bat for you. They really are patient advocates. They really have a heart. To, to help you on every level. I mean, mm-hmm. from the smallest thing to, to make sure you eating, not just the patient, but actually even the family. And, yeah. and that's an aspect that people don't really highlight a lot with social workers. And I, I really, when she said it, I was like, yes, let's get this information out because it's dear to my heart, it's dear to the medical field for sure. And we really need to show you your, how great you are, give you your achievements, and as my grandmother used to say, give people their flowers while they live, and they can smell it and appreciate it. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, man, but thank you so much, Donnie. We want to thank you for thank all you. that you do. And and if we, like I said, if we can help you with anything, please, please don't hesitate to contact us. Not at all. I appreciate this. Oh, you're welcome. Woo, ladies and gentlemen, I know you're ready for the download of this, right? <laughs> well, wait, you know, we got to get it all together. But here at the Dr. Renee Sunday Show, we want to, what we said, bring you awareness. Because we have to have awareness first before we can actually go in the process of making a change, right? So we actually thank you for tuning in. Please share this with your friends, family. You know, and how they say that even the people you don't like. Right, So, because we need to get out of that. Because we all have a purpose here on this earth, okay? If you want to be a part of our team here, you want to be a guest on the Dr. Renee Sunday Show, if you want to start your own podcast, guess what? I teach that. If you want to start your own magazine, um, you know, I'm a publisher, so finally get that book out, right? So someone needs to hear what you have to say so they can be have the best version of themselves, right, right? But also, you know, I'm in the community. We do have the nonprofit organization uh, called Sunday Dream Centers. We move it across the world, so we're excited about that. And you know, of course, I am a speaker, international speaker. So, you know, I just like doing things to help people, just like John had told us on this broadcast. But, you know, please contact us. You know, I'm, in the, I'm an anesthesiologist as well. So in regards of mental health, you can find someone wherever you are. We have that database. And Johnny has it as well that we can help each other, right? It does take the whole village. So I want to let you know that you do have a calling. You do have a reason you were born. You're not a mistake. You're not a mistake. No, you're not a mistake. No matter what you said to yourself or no matter what someone has said to you, we have to do three things. We have to believe. We have to trust. And we have to walk it out. And you know the rest. We got to don't stop. We got to what? Get it, get it. And what are we getting? We're getting our purpose and we're getting our purpose now. This is the Dr. Renee Sunday Show. We'll see you next time. We love you. Bye-bye.